So I like to talk about causes squash inequality today. And uh, I think I first came across this, uh, the more special, a special case of causes squash inequality, something like this. Sum over ai, i equal to 1 over n, ai square, multiply sum over bi square, i equal to 1 to n. And uh, it's bigger than equal to sum over ai, bi equal to 1 over to n. So this is big n here. And um, and then I, when I went to undergrad, then I came across a form. It's much more general and it's much more simple. It's just uh, if you have like two elements in vector space or more specifically in Hilbert space, then the inner product between A and A and B and B will be just bigger than equal to A and B square. And in particular, you can see that this, the first form here is just a special case of this form. If we assume the, uh, the water space or the Hilbert space is just, uh, Rn. And also the inner product, let's say if I have A and B in Rn, and the inner product between A and B defined as the A transpose B, where like A and B is assumed to be uh, column vector. So, or like this would be like simply therefore like A I B I I from 1 to N, exactly this thing here. And then of course A and A will be just the first term here, B and B is the second term here, and so on. So let, let me give a couple more examples of course this squash inequality. So let's say I can also have this Hilbert space is actually uh, the L2 space, the function space, with all the square inter integrable uh, functions. Uh, then let's say I have two of the elements, f and g, and I can define the inner product of f and g as uh, the integral fxgx. Uh, with x from minus infinity to plus infinity, basically cover the all the entire real line. Um, then uh, I the the cosy squash inequality become like something like f x dx square x the entire real line and gx square oh. Oh. is bigger than equal to fx gx so it's it's pretty cool i mean like um as as you can see like we, we have something like quite a bit different like uh, and it's, in general, it's not obvious like, how we can show this, but we just somehow, if we apply the quasi squash inequality, we have this inequality right away. And uh, let me give one more example. Let's say if I have the Hilbert space composed of all the um, n by n matrices. Um, so therefore, like, let's say I consider this space, like this is the Hilbert space. And... Um, so let's say I have A and B matrices for that. And um, we write a little bit better. And uh, I define the inner product of A and B as chase A transpose B. So of course I need to show that like this is actually a valid inner product. So for this to be a valid inner product, I need to make sure that like the inner product is symmetric. That is like I should have like a b is equal to b a, uh, or in general I should have a b is equal to the complex conjugate of b a. But since a b is like real apparently because the matrices are real matrices, um, so I, 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 this is sufficient. 
So an AB during the product of A and B is equal to chase A transpose B, right? So if I look at like what is A transpose B, um, A transpose itself is like an M by M matrix, right? And the B is like an M by M matrix. So A transpose B is supposed to be M by M. So if I consider its ij element, so it should be something like ai, aki, uh, b, kj, some k from 1 to n, right? Something like this. So therefore, like trace of a transpose b should be just sum over all the diagonal element of a transpose b. So therefore, should sum over uh, i from 1 to m. And I substitute this into here, so I have k equal to 1 to n, uh, a, k, i, b, k. So be careful that I have diagonal element, so it's j is equal to i, so a, k, i. So apparently this form is symmetric, and uh, uh, I mean, trace b transpose a will be simply like flipping these two. So trace, I mean trace B transpose A should be just equal to I equal to 1 to M, K equal to 1 to N, B K I, A K I. So therefore like this should be equal. So therefore um the inner product is symmetric. So but it's only one of the property of inner product. Uh we also need to show that like it's it's linear, the inner product is linear. Namely, if I have like let's say C D, two other uh, uh, m by m matrices C M D, uh, so I should have A A C plus B D is equal to A A C plus B A D. So note that this a, b here is just real number. So this is just uh, the linearity property. And I'm not going to show this because I, it's came, coming out wide from the definition as long as we realize that like both chase and uh, multiplication of matrices are linear. So finally, we need to show that like also uh, the inner product is def uh, positive definite. That means that like if I consider a and a, Ooh, right. it should be bigger than equal to zero and it's it's obvious because we're just coming from like what we have earlier a and a is equal to trace a transpose a and this turns out it's just equal to sum over essentially all the all element the square of all the elements, ki square. So therefore, of course, it will be bigger than equal to zero. And also, like if this uh, inner product is equal to zero, then it means that each of the element is zero. So therefore, like if if trace a transpose a is zero then a will be just equal to zero. So therefore, it's indeed it's, uh, defin a positive definite. Um, if, if we don't have this condition, then we we'll say that like the inner product is semi-positive definite, but yeah, in this case, positive definite. So, okay, so, so therefore like with this, all these three properties, so this one, the positive definite, this is the positive definite property. Uh, this is the linearity. And this is symmetry. Symmetry. So with all these three properties, uh, we, we know that this is a valid inner product. So therefore, like, we can use uh, the quasi squash inequality. And therefore, we have the Actually, we didn't write down the, uh, okay, 
Therefore, the Cauchy Scorch inequality in this case will become like trace A transpose A multiplied by trace B transpose B is bigger than equal to trace A transpose B square. So, in terms of the the proof is very simple as well. So, if I consider like uh, the the trick is consider something like the inner product between a minus t b and itself. Of course, this will be bigger than equal to zero. That's the property of inner product. This is the norm of a minus t b has to be bigger than equal to zero. And um, what we want is that we want to make this bound as tight as possible. So we want this as small as possible. So the intuition is that like we can consider a minus t p as let's say a is for example if a is a vector in general if like the hyperspace is just a vector space then a is a vector let's say this is a and let's say I have this is b then um t b let me use another color t b can be something something for example I can have this as tb then a minus tb will be just something like that right this is uh, a minus tb and, and you can see that like a minus tb ah why this keep doing this I mean I hate it a minus tb uh, will be smallest when ah uh, this is killing me I don't know why this automatically you waste of uh, this is tb um ah this is so crazy so a minus tb is smallest when uh tb is just a projection of a onto b right so what I mean is that I can make it smallest if it turns out that this is TB and TB is actually just a projection of A onto B and then A minus TB will be smallest and then the question is like what, what is the projection so TB since it's a projection of A onto B will be something like equal to uh, A in the product of A and B hat multiplied by B hat where b hat is the normalized b just the universal of b pointing in the same direction of b so it should be something like this way so therefore like uh, if i substitute b hat by this b over the norm of b then it's equal to a and b over norm of b and multiply by b over norm of b so therefore it's equal to a b norm of b square multiplied by b right uh, and so therefore this should be t right and norm of b square of course is just equal to it's just equal to uh, in the product between b and b so therefore t is just equal to a b for b and b now we may try to substitute this t back into this equation here and um, maybe change back the color oh, this I hate this I don't know why so um, ah, 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 I don't know why this is that okay anyway so let, let, let me Let me expand this first. If I expand this, I got like a a minus t. I need to be careful. T b and a minus a and t b plus t b and t b, and this should be bigger than equal to zero. And 
and um, and let's see, like A A, I just copy that again. So T B M A here, I assume that the inner portal can be compressed, so I need to be careful. Like uh, this, I can pull this out and get T B A, and for this guy. I, I should pull out conjugate of T instead and T A B something like that and this I pull out like T and the conjugate of T B B is bigger than equal to zero now then T is equal to this way so I, I have A A minus A B over B B and B A and minus Compass conjugate of T will be just B A over B B and A B. So remember that like for compass in the portal, uh, the compass conjugate of A B is just equal to B A. So we just use that property. And for this guy, I have A B B A over B B. B B multiplied by B B is bigger than equal to zero, and one of these B B go cancel. So you see that these three terms are actually identical. So therefore, like, I can uh, cancel this last two terms. Let's say so I only have this is bigger than equal to zero. Then if I pull this on the other side and multiply B B on the other side, immediately you see that we have the inequality that A A B B. Is bigger than equal to a b b a. Of course, this is just equal to the a b the long square. So, let me have one short. Yeah, long square. So um, and that's the proof of the cross squash inequality, and uh, that's all I like to talk about. I'm sorry about like I don't know why this keep suddenly erasing stuff, but uh, thank you for your attention.